as you know, it's a services world out there. Almost anything you need to interact with has an API. And if there's no API, there's probably a web page. And I'm going to show you that the combination of APIs and web pages allow you to connect your app to almost anything. So we might want to talk to GitHub to work with source code, repositories, automated builds. Maybe we want to use Twilio for adding telephony and text services to our app. Of course, we want to update people through their Slack channel, send and subscribe people to our mailing list via MailChimp, charge them money for over their credit cards using the Stripe APIs, query some back-end business data using Salesforce, send out some emails with SendGrid, or even manage and work with our projects offline through Basecamp. So if we want to connect our app to these types of services and many, many more, we're going to need to learn how to work with services in Python. And that's what consuming HTTP and SOAP services in Python is all about. So whether you want to talk to GitHub, Stripe, Basecamp, or even that old-fashioned SOAP service that runs the back end of your business, you're going to learn how to do that here. And by working with all these services, you'll see that you can give your app superpowers. I hope you're very excited to explore the world of services from Python with me. What are we going to cover in this course? Well, we're going to talk primarily about transports that run over HTTP, REST, JSON over REST, or XML, or a variety of other things. We're going to even talk about SOAP. So we're going to use requests, we're going to use URL lib2, and we're going to use URL lib requests. Now, if you're unfamiliar with these, requests is the most popular way to write Python clients for services. However, sometimes we want to use stuff that's in the box, if you will, that comes with your Python distribution that everybody already has, because requests you have to install separately. So we're going to talk about Python 2's URL lib2 and Python 3's URL lib and associated submodules like request and error and so on. Now, many of these services are going to require us to authenticate, to log in. So we're going to see how we can do username and password authentication to access restricted services. We're going to work with a variety of different data formats. When we talk to these HTTP services, they might want to send us data back in the form of JSON or XML or super complicated XML in the form of SOAP or even binary data. So we're going to look at how each one of these data formats is managed and worked with in Python and how to use that kind of data from a service. And finally, if there is no service, we're also going to talk about screen scraping. Often we'll have a direct endpoint that we can contact and use a well-known API against. But if the data is on a web page and there's no API, what do you do? Well, you do screen scraping. And screen scraping will let you go to a standard HTML page and more or less turn that HTML page into an API or series of HTML pages. So at the end of the course, this is our final chapter that we're going to cover is doing basically adding services to websites that don't have services by making their web page themselves the thing that provides data to our app.